Okay, so just uh, before I start, I wanted to show uh, the management plugin we talked about. So basically, you install a plugin to RabbitMQ and then you can see in browser statistics like this. And uh, one other thing, uh, which I like, uh, what might be important for a lot of people in web development is uh, like, uh, what if something goes uh, offline? So like if you have some uh, um, like uh, server side, like say image processing service, so if you communicate uh, over MQP, it's asynchronous, and it stays in the broker, then uh, uh, if the service goes offline, it doesn't really matter because the messages are kept and uh, Whereas with uh, HTTP, you're out of luck, basically. Like if you have like, uh, if you want to deploy uh, as uh, as often as possible, as quite some startups want nowadays, then like, this is pretty useful. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, I came to talk about the Ruby libraries for it. The reason why I came to talk about Ruby libraries is because I work on them. Uh, I work for the ResetMQ team of VMware as a contractor in London. And yeah, I arrived to Dublin today. <laughs> I love Guinness. And you have really shitty weather, guys. <laughs> Even worse than in London. <laughs> and yeah, fair might not be my favorite transport option because I nearly saw my breakfast one more time. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to uh, do it like uh, more uh, like uh, questions, answers, and informal. So if you have anything to ask, please ask. Me. Uh, so actually, how many of you guys are using? Uh, some of the Ruby libraries. Okay. <laughs> How many uh, of you guys are actually using RabbitMQ? Okay, so uh, how many of uh, you guys uh, are just like uh, figuring out what is messaging and uh, wanted to see whether you can use it for your website? Okay, so what is the rest of us doing here? It's not your thing. Okay, I hope, it will be, I hope it will be useful. So I'll probably keep it rather short because it's more in depth into Ruby. So uh, basically, there are quite some libraries for Ruby. The, uh, more, most uh, low level one is uh, AMQ protocol chain, which is basically just a parser of AMQP. It's really fast, and uh, now the AMQP chain, which is the most uh, popular option, is built on top of uh, this chain, so it's now much faster than it used to be. <coughs> then is, uh, there's MQ client, which is a uh, low level client built on top of MQ protocol gem. And uh, it's uh, agnostic, it's uh, support an event machine, pool IO, and uh, currently I'm working on so socket uh, adapter because Bunny, will be, uh, which is another library, will be ported on top of MQ client soon. And yeah, it's fairly low level, it's not aimed for the end users, but also can be used. <coughs> like uh, there's an example of uh, the event, uh, event machine client, it's just a uh, callback pass install. Yeah, you have to pass a lot of <coughs> weird arguments. It's definitely better to use something more high level, which is like 
the most obvious choice is uh, the AM3 PGM, which was uh, developed uh, back in 2008 by Amand It's based on the event machine. Event machine is uh, basically a reactor pattern implemented in Ruby. And uh, yeah, it was mostly rewritten by me and uh, Michael Koshin in the past year. Here is how it looks. So it's again callback passing style, but uh, it's much more high level. You get uh, all the lecture stuff like reconnections working and so on. Then there is Bunny. Bunny is a synchronous client. It's uh, very simple and uh, it's based on MQP. Uh, Chen code and currently we are trying to upgrade it on uh, NQ client so it uh, can use the faster <coughs> parser as well and we are fixing bugs and just doing it better. Yeah, so here it's how it works. You don't have any callbacks, you're just like it's it's just synchronous and Right, it, uh, it's basically just a loop. Then there's carrot. Uh, I don't know much about carrot uh, because uh, it's not maintained by the Rabbit MQ team, but uh, it's based on MQP gen code again, and it's synchronous, and apparently it's still in development quite active. So it might be an option as well. So yeah, so much about uh, Ruby libraries. And second thing I wanted to talk uh, are basically uh, clouds. Uh, how can the Rabbit used in clouds? I think it's uh, really important because uh, messaging is a key concept in clouds because you need to communicate uh, with multiple machines and. Uh, Rabbit has uh, all the mechanisms you, you need for it. And uh, I also believe that server side architecture should be asynchronous. So instead of uh, like uh, getting some data, uh, saving it into the database, and then doing a lot of stuff in uh, with this uh, in synchronous manner, like uh, tweeting or doing anything with it, I think it should be just uh, sent uh, and processed later. So currently, uh, yeah, this is old. Uh, apparently, uh, on Heroku, it's uh, the RabbitMQ service is on public beta now, so you can try it yourself. And uh, it's just a standard Heroku architecture. You need to uh, enable the module, how do they call it? And uh, at the moment, uh, there are no plugins apart of uh, the management plugin. And uh, there are some examples on GitHub, you can check it out. And uh, RabbitMQ is also working on Cloud Foundry uh, for quite some weeks. Looks that it works fine. Unfortunately, uh, there are no plugins for now. And uh, as far as I know, there is no decision whether there will be some plugins supported or not. We have to see. And uh, last, uh, on uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, oh, they are quite low level. install it as anything else and uh, there is a link to a uh, guide how to make it work in on Amazon. So yes, do you have any question? Yes. If you 
mentioned uh, Jordan Rabbit and Q East and Amazon services. How would you compare it to Amazon's SQS? I imagine there must be quite a few differences. Uh, actually, I never used uh, Amazon SQS, uh, but uh, I think you have to pay for it somehow. Definitely, Rabbit and Q is uh, more advanced. Uh, so if uh, if you need uh, some more advanced functionality than I think on the Rabbit and Q versus the USQS stuff, it helps to migrate the one service. And the difference is you have to pay for the USQS, right? And yeah. run the road or the computers and stuff. And also the, the response time. So if you send stuff over SQS, it takes like an order of like seconds in or maybe like in a half minute to then reach your, your consumer. Uh, which is fine if you, if you have like, you know, a huge amount of messages and you want to push it like, you know, through like, all this stuff, all the files there. But if you just, you know, run an individual service and you want your messages to go up like, fast enough, then SQS is hardly, uh, you know, the, the choice for it. I guess SQS is a lot too, whereas not really is a mission broker. And there, and there, there it's a bunch of patterns on top of it, you And um, I think SQS <coughs> is most, mostly compared to the internet version of MSN queue. So I won't do fan out, pub sub, all that kind of stuff. Okay, thank you for this. Just in terms of your troubles in the history of uh, Pony and uh, Robin Q and things like that. So, where did it start off exactly in the Pony and where does it come to now? Because I think you're talking about the right method of Pony. Barris, what? But, but where, I suppose, just where, where did it start off with Pony? Because Pony was kind of one of the first gems. Oh, was it? Or? Um, no. Like, uh, sorry, I'm still not on the. What do you mean? Oh, no, sorry, just, I suppose it's so open to all of you games, the, the different gems involved. The, the, yeah. What's the significance of the Pony gem? Yeah. Uh, well, if you want something really simple and mm -hmm. synchronous, then uh, Bunny is uh, Bunny is uh, good because you don't need to mess with the uh, event machine. Event machine can get really complicated sometimes, and mm -hmm. uh, like it's a it's a really good uh, thing, but uh, and uh, for simple things uh, you don't have to need much, but then you run into corner cases and. Uh, <laughs> It gets really very complicated. So, like, if you need something simple, then Bunny is like <coughs> the yeah. option. So that's one of your choices at the moment, and the Ruby Gem world, which means uh, Pony and and uh, Event Machine. There are two distinct choices. Whether you want simplicity or power. Basic. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. is there is there a third one? Or it's Event Machine is really the main more sophisticated solution for, for Oh, event machine is uh, basically a reactor pattern so mm -hmm. it's uh, like uh, you have uh, events and so on and non-blocking stuff so Does it sound like um, for a lot of cases you probably want funny if you want to write a simple blocking it has to take five minutes to figure out to do some image processing yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Well, I, I guess if we're going to go that route you probably want to go with some sort of Oh, really? Well, uh, like uh, event, it, it's basically event machine, like uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. I was, I was saying if, if you were going to not do the event one, would you bother doing this at all? I suppose. Well, I, I just thought the big advantage of running Java and Q is that you get the choice. Yes, yeah. so you can write a crummy script that takes five minutes to do some image processing. It doesn't block the main application. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in terms of the broker plugin, was was it in building the broker plugin is or is it a complicated affair or it is it difficult oh, to like get your plugin into the broker? Uh, well, I never write the uh, broker plugin. I think uh, the best uh, person to yeah. ask. How to embed it? Plugin? Yeah. How to install it? Basically. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. just you get some EZ files. 
like, like zipped files or whatever. And there is a plugins folder on RabbitMQ. So you drop the files there and restart the broker or start it for the first time. Okay. So most of the time when you do the plugin, you will build it and then you distribute these compressed files. And you don't even need to uncompress it. So you just put that package inside the plugins folder. And so like this management plugin he showed is like four files. And you put the awesome. awesome. plugins only airline. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, in the plugin you can do whatever you can do in airline, you can do it. So mm -hmm. yeah, it should be fairly simple, but still you need airline or is this basic. And do, do you know in terms of using engineer to preserve is it just you to install it on your server as normal if you just had a server? Or is there anything specific you need to do for engineer? I never use it. Um, I never use it either, but I don't think you need anything special. It's just you to use Once I set up this in a, like, not a shared host, but in a VPS, mm -hmm. and it was on Ubuntu VPS, and I got the, I installed that one. Uh, the dependency for Erlang and it got Erlang working. Yeah. It's better if you install it manually because uh, the latest version of Erlang has really good improvements on performance. Okay. So the Ubuntu is quite lagging behind. Yeah. And then you download the ATAR with RabbitMQ and it's 20 seconds to get it up. Once you have Erlang. Mm. So. Okay. It's about install and I, I thought about writing original so problem Irish English so any more questions <laughs> Can we get some more <laughs> sorry Can we get some more <laughs> <laughs> Gem, uh, everything apart of Bane was uh, MQP on A, just uh, Bane was uh, 091, and now everything is 091 because of. Yeah. Ah. So the question is if you have some old clients, right? Yeah. Like, and you have like your new like, uh, 091 rather than Q, like, would they work? Yes. Like uh, the question is if, if the broker supports both versions of the oh. protocol, and yes, it does. So the, the when the library negotiates the connection, it will send the header, like the client capabilities and so on, and then you say this connection will be 0.8 or 0.9.1. So like it supports both. Yes, but I don't know how for how long it will support the other. Yeah, but it's there. Uh, yeah, definitely it's supported in the protocol. Not very sure uh, what's the plan in uh, in Revit and Q because I'm using only online one. The protocol is getting up since we back quite a big names like JP Morgan and the action industry. How much traction is that getting, say, from an integration perspective between the organizations? Are they just using the internally themselves or how much are they being used between each other? And it's, it's, it's a point nine one, so it's not. Like the protocol itself, it's it's open standard, but what's the adoption like? It's fair enough for people using RabbitMQ internally inside their own systems, but how much are they using the protocol, say, for integration between between sites and customers? Uh, is it a reasonable integration protocol? Like uh, integration 
what do you mean? This is okay. business is business. Business is business. So we've got Swift messaging. I got a couple of some gearing areas that needs to feed into taking more of its training platform. And are they using any for that, or are they are they using some other like public API basically? Yeah, it's a protocol for it. Uh, like uh, all the use cases I can think about uh, are like more internal. Like, uh, like well, if you're if you're a service provider, would you expose an AMQP endpoint as an integration perspective, or would you still need to do some customized? If you're a cloud service provider, I've seen this standard thing. People just flood with messages, but it's not. Well, you still need to be the security endpoint. Yeah. Um, but what has a protocol? Sure. They hit where they where they publish messages on AMQP, yeah. and you're expose that endpoint. You got some identity that are locked. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And so. Have you heard of anyone doing that, Oliver? Have I got, sorry? Of having AMQP as a, an API to, uh, as an external service on the web. Besides from the RabbitMQ website, as a public broker, <laughs> I haven't heard of it. But you, in Rabbit, you have, or in AMQP, you have users and be host. So a user can only create, read, and what not from the particular be host. And then each user has uh, permissions. To create a read from queue so to create the authentication yeah. authorization aspect of And then in, in really in the I mean Erlang if if you know Erlang, the like Erlang works all by pattern matching. Yeah. So in the name of the queue internally actually the protocol the sorry the V host is part of the of the real yeah. queue name, what is stored on the database. Yeah. So whenever it does a query, it will actually use that. So a user from a different V host cannot we, he will never get a queue that doesn't belong to him or an exchange yeah. and so on. So, well, you know, I think what's the other side of the ticket? If um, you're providing a service in the cloud service provider, they're using the Jira queues, it's an open API, and the customer can publish to the Jira queue that you own or an SQS queue. If you're exposing a random queue, and you point now an AMQP or an AMQP, is that, mm -hmm. the people program is that cross? Mm -hmm. Like that's an interesting idea, and uh, I can't think about any reason why it couldn't work. I think uh, for some, definitely for some use cases, it uh, might be interesting. But I, I've never seen it uh, in in <coughs> the suite or The thing probably um, maybe we're rubbing, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but we're rubbing cube probably usually wrapped by a language just a little bit at least like let's say from a Ruby perspective if you're going to do something like that you probably expose expose a RESTful service or rest or so with yeah. with Rabbit and Q behind it if you want to you know and if you want to have a highly vented and high throughput you might use it like Goliath or Ruby or something like that to yeah. kind of use something like an equivalent of Node JS or something like that kind of thing but behind it. I imagine that's the only way to be safe from that layer that it would be rest there and of course for, for me as, as, so as he said there is no reason why it wouldn't work. Mm. If you would do it or not. They're not doing it. Well, the real good. question is um, security surface area. Mm. Mm. Um, the problem, I mean, Rabbit MQ, I'm guessing, is pretty untested and security wise. And so it's a protocol more interesting rather than the. Well, even AMQP, I mean, yeah. why not just simply wrap a, a REST service around it? That mm. way you can switch back in implementation to that carry. I mean, REST service. If you put a REST service at the front of you have to provide a REST client on the other side to understand the REST service. And that's then, that's yeah, it, it, that, that has a little, a little more friction. And have you ever had it? For, for push types, if you have a if you're looking at you have something in other teams where you're not doing a call periodically. Yeah, they'll go back to REST and first they'll go to REST. Then you're not, but that's not fake. Yeah. Not yeah. Like, oh, no. But you can use that to implement that. Of course, of course, yeah, that's it. Or not. Expose the AGP, it's possible. If people are doing that, they're not doing it, they're not doing it, they're not doing it, they're not doing it, they're not doing it. It probably depends on the kind of typical use case that people go with something like this. I mean, probably if it's something like um, Python, they probably tend to use something like a Ruby or Python framework like that. And, yeah. and that tends to have something. But not, not, not a very thin layer. It's like that. Don't actually listen to it at all. You're just working with the client libraries, both on the server side and the server side. I would imagine so. I think that that would probably be fair to use if I don't want to prejudge um, anything else. I think it depends on the type of use, 
use you have. I mean, personally, if I was using it, I could see those use cases where you use it with, with Sinatra, where you'd expose with 20 lines of code to the area you're kind of talking about. Now, it might be different from the exact messaging that you're talking about. Yeah. That, that's how I would visit using it. And then maybe once you get comfortable with that, then you decide, you know, for all reasons, you, you start to expose the that computer more late, more raw. Yeah. Once you get comfortable. But it's more of a progression, you know, uh, as opposed to a heavyweight, mm -hmm. this does everything, let's lock it in there, this solution. And that's really how I would progress with implement. I'd take it on board first, build a small thin layer, progress there, and then I don't know if it supports something more native yeah. in terms of exposing the queue, that's what I'd move to. I yeah. certainly yeah. think from a security point of view, it would but I think be cautious about exposing it. It would certainly be very cautious. I mean, I can see straight away if you had, say, the Yak stuff. We still need to, like, you still need to, you know, sign messages. Well, I'm just, just, in just even with the implementation, I mean, when you don't act a message, I presume that's held in memory. Yeah, yes. So if you, if someone wants to DDoS you, you just simply fire up a few hundred clients and just start putting messages and never act them. What about you? It's still, it's not even going to the endpoint, but it was exposed to the public, it's still a power. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just making a point that, you know, HTTP is kind of a known quality, and it's kind of, even that causes people huge amounts of problems. So, so, does, yeah. so would, you, would you be comfortable exposing it in a, say, banking situation? Or I would expose it with VPN to the storage, yeah. But that's, well, I suppose that's completely independent of them. No, but, but it still is on yeah. our side. But it's both of VPN. VPN is that they are kind of connected to, but they're, they're, it's still our servers that we can supply. I suppose the other thing is, I mean, would you trust them to not try to try to do dumb stuff? Yeah, well, <laughs> they do dumb stuff, it's their own problem. But it's their own problem. It's not important. So. Can, um, can zero and Q, I know what already you were saying that zero and Q can consume, or you can, there's a plugin that can consume MMTP. Um, could you use that? In this kind of situation, because zero and two is okay. rest-based, so can you put right wrap and two as the back end? For that? It's not rest-based. No, rest -based. no, no, it's just a library for like on top of so the sockets. So like you TCP yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's basically like uh, advanced sockets, basically yeah. sockets with uh, routing and so on. You get absolutely nothing apart from. And there's no security. Or it's not security. Just delivery. No, it's really, it's really, really good, but it's all you get. Yeah. Maybe it's like the thing of, of public APIs uh, for messaging servers would be XMPP, but it's mainly in chat servers. So they have to expose the web. I mean, I've experienced that already, that's quite a common bit of protocol. Yeah, it's, it's, not not as well. it's not scalable, it's the public implementations of the yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, but there are yeah. public APIs. Yeah. They are working also, the guy from RabbitMQ, the other Polish guy, but the Polish developer from Rabbit. Um, Marek. Yeah, yeah. Marek, Marek. the Marek guy from Rabbit Tank is writing or working on web messaging and he's trying, I think he's writing a plugin, I don't know exactly about uh, exposing web sockets. Web sockets, so, oh, yeah. Okay. I think of Ray for exposing. Kind of web sockets. So I tried that when I built this chat and it worked. Yeah. But it wasn't, there was no security part. And I think what they are concerned, I mean, what they are writing is to have the security authentication and see who access what. But it's, it's like it's what he say. I mean, it's up to you up to where like you put like a thin layer or, or you, you put everything behind a VPN mm -hmm. or, you, or you do the open NQP and then see what happens. Also mm -hmm. on the server you can have like this channel flow stuff to block producers. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it really, really depends on, on your need, I think. And no matter what, it's supposed to be in the game, you don't have to do this problem. You don't have to do that, yeah. Just break around with something, you can use top and top, you know, it's just, it, it can be back to the old things. It just, it's, it's, it's the same. You sort of reduce the rate of friction if there's a bridge or a mechanism where you can connect the option as a problem. And that layer of security and the top of it, it's yeah. really just part of the future. Yeah. And as far as that, from the lower layer, you want it. Those contracts and the clients and the version of the separate. So you just worry, you're only worried about the message contracts, not just email mm -hmm. contracts. Well. Mm -hmm. I suppose the big message, if you excuse the pun coming out tonight, is you know, if you want a, a good value, scalable, brilliant queuing system, then rather than queue server. I'd like to. That was cute, Barb. <laughs>
Yeah. So I think there's any more questions or uh, we just uh, wrap it up there. Just thanks, thanks very much. Thank you. Yes.